Welcome to another episode of Light On. I'm your host, Sheila, and together, let's go on a magical journey of expanding our consciousness. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're my returning subscriber, thank you. Please know that I'm truly grateful for your presence and your support. Our guest today specializes in helping people manage their emotions and thoughts so that they live consciously and manifest easily in every area of their life. In addition to being a life coach, she's also a trained practitioner in neuro-linguistic programming and mental space psychology. She also uses a tool called IDSR, Inquiry-Based Stress Reduction, which is also popularly known as the work of Byron Katie. Let's ask her how she puts all these together in her work. Welcome, Lucia. I hope I didn't miss out anything. Would you like to add to the introduction? Hi, Sheila. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, thank you for introducing me as a coach. I'm also a teacher of English and I'm also a facilitator. I do group workshops, um, whether it's in English or whether it's in coaching, self-coaching. How did you get into this area of work, Lucia? So I'm a very sensitive person myself. And I used to feel very overwhelmed by my emotions. And we're talking maybe 15 years back. So um, back in 2005, maybe, I started journaling. I started reflecting on what can I do differently? How can I manage my life differently? How can I change certain habits and not overreact, for example? And um, after maybe five years of journaling, I started looking for courses. I wanted to understand myself more. And so I did all sorts of courses, whether it be on inner child, family constellations, shadow work, you name it, I've tried it. Okay. And then I would say in 2015, I hired a coach, a life coach myself, and I worked with her for over a year, I would actually say 16 months, where I wanted to look at each and every area of my life and see what I can improve still. And after this experience where I saw how much it helped me, I decided to train as a coach myself. That was in 2016. And since then, I've been working as a coach. And I have done some other qualifications on top of that since then over the past four years. And that is the Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP, Mental Space Psychology, and uh, many other short programs which help me get a fuller picture of human psychology and how we work and what helps us best and uh, one of them is also the work that we'll be talking about today. You said that you use a tool called IDSR. So what exactly is IDSR? Okay so that's an abbreviation for uh, inquiry-based stress reduction and it's a tool, it's a self-development tool and um, what it helps us is to work with our thoughts and as a result of working with our thoughts the byproduct is we work with our emotions so think of your favorite teacher guru someone a spiritual person from whom you would read books or you would take advice on how to be peaceful for example so for some people it might be um, even their religion or their spiritual practice, or it might be Sadhguru, or it might be um, so many other people, Dalai Lama or whomever. And most of them actually talk about very, very similar things. And most of them tell us how to be peaceful, how to live in gratitude, how to live in the now and not in the past and not in the future. And um, yeah, how to not keep certain bitterness, or regrets from the past or anxieties of the future and actually they don't tell us how i've been saying they tell us how but they don't they tell us what to do but until i discovered the work i didn't know how i thought okay it is nice that you tell me be in the now don't don't think about the next minute and don't think about what happened in the last five minutes when someone upset you just be in the now and i thought that is beautiful but how, how do I do it? I 
I was missing something practical, some practical tool to really teach me how to do it. And that is what the ABSR or the work is about. I have discovered the, the, the tool which tells me how, not just what to do, but how, you know, step one, two, three, four, very simple um, tool that we can, I can use in the, in the real moment, in real life. I'm in a shop and someone really upsets me and I can use it there and then. So it's not just a spiritual practice. It is very practical. Yeah, and maybe I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell you one more thing. So why it's called the work of Byron Katie, and it's very important. So this lady named Byron Katie Mitchell, Byron Kathleen Mitchell, um, she's often just called Katie. In 1986, uh, after 10 years of very deep depression, where she hated herself, she hated her children, she hated her husband and everybody else, she was a successful businesswoman she was making money but apart from that she was just suffering big time being overwhelmed with anger and with grief and all of that so she couldn't even come out of her bedroom she was actually doing her business deals from her bedroom on the phone and um, so after 10 years of that in 1986 she woke up one day and she realized she somehow you could call it she became enlightened um, she doesn't call it that way um, but when you look at it, you know, for, for a mortal like me, I would probably call it that way. And she was just laying there, woke up one day laying there, and she realized that she doesn't have to believe her thoughts. And sp especially her stressful thoughts. She realized that when she believes a stressful thought, like, uh, what if I don't have money next year? What, do you have, what if I don't have money next month? Okay, and it's just a thought, it's just a hypoth hypothesis, right? It's not even real, but she realized it's not even real and it's already causing her so much pain, emotional pain. And then being the observer when she woke up, then she realized, and when I don't believe the thought, I feel so much at peace. And um, so then she came back uh, home. She was actually in this facility for, um, I would say, it's probably like uh, food, food addictions and food problems because that was the only facility that her insurance company would pay for. She didn't have a food problem, but you know she wanted some mind detox, so to speak, and this was the only thing that her insurance company would pay for. And then she came back home and she was so much at peace. She was just sitting at home, peaceful, from this person who was raging and who was angry at everyone and everything. And people were like, what happened? her family and the whole community they were like what happened and soon people started coming to home and they were like you got this piece how did you do it can you tell us how you did it i want the same and so it took her a while to try and put it in words and to try and say how can i explain it best to you and so since then since 1986 she's been she's been teaching this uh, around the world millions of people do it Lots of therapists and counselors use this tool in their practice. And uh, she's now in her late 70s, like nearly 80 years old. That is so wonderful. And I know that a lot of uh, spiritual teachers uh, do tell us to be in the, moment, in the moment, be in the now. I know I do it. I use it extensively with all my clients and with all my students where I, I do teach them how to be in the now. But the thing is, it's a very difficult practice. It is a very difficult practice. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that I have been receiving quite a few times, and which is what I'm going to put before you is, why, why do we need to manage all these emotions? Why not just let them flow? Isn't that what the beauty of life is all about? Mm -hmm. Yes, emotions definitely make our life more beautiful. Um, they bring depth and they bring a feeling of being alive because emotions are not just negative, they are also positive. And if we want to have the positive, we can't try to numb and kill the negative. You can't have one without the other. So um, yes, let's keep our emotions and let's learn how to work with those that are not very good, and when I say good, useful to us, you know, what is good for me might not be good for you and vice versa. So each of us decides what is good for me, what is useful. And when I say, so I don't like to use the word manage emotions. I like to use to work with emotions. 
And we have to distinguish between two things. And one is emotion in the moment. So if I'm upset with you, Sheila, if I were upset with you, uh, I would definitely tell you. Okay, I would try to tell you in a in a kind, the kindest way that I'm capable of in that moment. So I would say, hey, Sheila, I'm shaking. My whole body is shaking. I am upset with you for what you said or for what you did. So I certainly would express that I wouldn't want to kill or numb those emotions. That would be very counterproductive. What this tool helps with is something slightly different, and that is the longer term emotions and thoughts and issues that keep coming back. So it could be regrets from the past or bitterness from the past, where I still remember that 20 years ago, uh, my brother did this to me. Okay, and maybe he only did it once 20 years ago. But every time I think about it, I suffer again. And I feel, you know, I might feel regret, or I might feel anger. And it's still, imagine it is still damaging my relationship to my brother today. And it's totally unnecessary. You know, why wasn't I able to let go, forgive. Um, so this is what the work can help with. Um, it is either something that happened in the past or something that keeps repeating. If someone keeps triggering me and ticking me off with the same behavior over and over and over again, you know, why do, I, why do I suffer from one thought? How many times have I suffered already? And each time I suffer, it's not for two minutes. Maybe it upsets me again for two hours. And that's two hours of my day when I could have been productive. Uh, and instead, I've been just pacing about trying to manage these emotions. And I'm like that. It shows in my body. And to just calm myself down, I have to go open the fridge, uh, have some chocolate or have, I don't know. So it ends up in coping strategies, which are not good for me. It wastes time. It wastes my health. It wastes my energy because we all know when we're trying to um, manage emotions in the moment, how draining that is on our energy and we can't i can't concentrate during the day and i can't sleep during the night especially if it's something which is quite big for example i'm not happy in my marriage or i'm not happy in my work and it just keeps coming back over and over again so i would say it is these longer term issues that uh, the work helps with it's like uh, i sometimes compare it to yoga your short-term issue or let's say you have a back problem your short of issues you have a slip disc okay and a slip disc requires different treatment or you to deal with it differently mm, that would be the acute problem and then the longer term problem is i might have a back pain and for that i do yoga whilst for slip disc i probably will, wouldn't wouldn't go and do yoga immediately because i would even aggravate it Okay, but for the longer term issues, I do yoga as the preventative measure. And I know that if I do it regularly enough, I will probably get rid of the back pain. And as a result, I can also prevent the slip disc. So we work with the work, we work more on the longer term things, but we can also, with the practice, I become more and more and more peaceful. And therefore, I also, I am. I am observing that in myself, that also in my emotions in the moment, if you upset me right now, I am able to see it more peacefully and I'm more the observer that the spiritual teachers talk about. And I'm just more able to be there with this understanding of you, understanding of me, not taking it personally, you know, being, being a, little, a tiny little more enlightened than before. Now, I have been part of your workshop where you introduced um, introduce us to the work. Would you, would you be able to demonstrate it for our viewers? Because I remember the reason why I joined your workshop was I was very fascinated by, um, by the serenity and peace that I saw in you and actually practicing what you preach, which is why I was fascinated and I signed up for your workshop. So would you be able to take the viewers through that so they, they can also experience this? Absolutely, yes. And I have prepared a little exercise for this so that they can get a mini bite uh, of what it feels like. And so I will invite them to enter into this with an open mind, enter into this with being willing to 
see a situation which they already know, but see it in a new light and see maybe new truths in that situation. And so Sheila, also you can work with us uh, okay. silently for yourself, you know, think of a situation of your own. And um, the same I invite your viewers to do. Okay. I will take you through a process. And for this process, I invite you all to become very still in the body and in the mind um, and through breath. So a good way to become still in the mind is make your body still and breathe. And so I invite you to do that now. Take a few deep breaths and become as still as you can. And as you're breathing, I will explain to you what we will do. I will be asking you questions, a series of questions. And every time I ask a question, I will invite you to not think about the answer. We are trying to bypass the mind. Instead, I invite you to let the question drop inside you, enter you, and wait for the answer to emerge. Just be still and wait, give yourself time and wait for the answer to emerge. And whichever answer comes up is the right answer. Don't try to analyze too much. I usually say even if your answer is a blue elephant, then it's a blue elephant. You might not understand it there and then, but sooner or later through the process, you will understand it. And I will go through the process slightly faster in the interest of time, slightly faster than usual. However, what you can do is if you need, if you as viewers need more time to think, or to notice the answer, not so much thing, to notice the answer, then you can pause the video, stay still, notice the answer deeper, and whenever you're ready to go to the next step, you can hit play again and go to the next question. So as you're breathing, I invite you to think of a situation where somebody criticized you or where somebody didn't agree with what you were doing. They thought you could do it better. You should do it better. Or they criticized you for what you said, what you did or for who you are, what kind of a person you are. Maybe they said you're too lazy. Maybe they said, you're not ambitious enough. So think of a situation like that from the past. And I think we can all relate to it somewhere. Choose one such situation. Choose one specific situation. And notice who was it with. Were you face to face with the person or were you on the phone? or through text messages or emails, for example. Notice what time of the day it was, more or less was it in the afternoon or the morning or evening. And so notice what specifically you were saying and doing and what the other person was saying and doing. So we are bringing ourselves back into that situation and noticing some details with as many senses as we can also. Notice if there were any smells, if there was any energy, was it, was it in summer, was it in winter? So general details like that. And so this is your original situation. I will be calling this original situation throughout the process. And I will every now and then ask you to go back to this situation. And the reason is that um, when you go back, it, it triggers the answers in you. And so this person shouldn't criticize you. 
Notice how much it upsets you. If you were to give it an emotional number from zero to 10, where zero is, oh, it doesn't upset me at all. And 10 is, you know, I'm feeling very upset even right now. Notice the emotional number or how much it upset you in the moment. Was it five out of 10, two out of 10, nine out of 10, whatever it is for you. Just notice how much it upset you that this person criticized you. And this tool works with upsetting stressful thoughts. So if it doesn't upset you, then you probably don't need to work with it. But if it does upset you, then I invite you, um, it will probably be useful to you. So let's go through the process. Your negative feelings were triggered by this thought, he shouldn't criticize me. And so my first question to you, and again, let that question enter you and wait for the answer to emerge. So ask yourself, this person shouldn't criticize me. Is it true? A simple question. Is it true that he or she shouldn't criticize me? And the answer is only yes or no, nothing else. Notice that sometimes our mind, our ego is trying to say yes, but is trying to justify, explain, don't allow your ego do that. Only stick with, is it true, yes or no? Next question. Please notice what emotions arise for you when you think the thought he or she shouldn't criticize me. What were the emotions in that moment that came up for you? when this person criticized you. Give yourself a few moments. What were the emotions? And there might be a mix of different emotions. Quite often it's not just one, there's a whole mix. And you can pause if you need to ponder over this for a bit longer. I will move on to the next question. Notice where in your body those emotions are when you think the thought he or she shouldn't criticize me. Where in the body are those emotions for you? Are they in the belly, in the chest, in your head or anywhere else? For each of us, it will be slightly different. So notice what it is for you. You're building up a certain awareness, deeper awareness of that original situation. And again, if you need more time, you can pause the video now and I will move on to the next question. Notice the judgments or the labels that your mind is giving that person who criticized you. So I'll give you an example. A friend criticized me and the judgments that or the labels that my mind put on him was, he is uncaring, he is rude, he wants to attack me. That will be from my example. So what, it, what is it for you? What are the judgments that in the moment when this person criticized you, your mind put on that person? How was it that you were judging them in the moment negatively? And the next question. Notice how you reacted when this person criticized you. How did you behave? How did you behave towards this person? How did you treat him? What did you do? What did you say? Did you attack back? Did you raise your voice? Did you 
give him a bad look, thinking, oh, you are so not spiritual or you're so bad for criticizing me? Or did you isolate yourself? Did you go into your room and not speak to this person for a long time? So what specifically did you do or say in that moment when you believed the thought that he criticized me? How did you behave as a result? How did you behave in response? And again, let that question enter you and notice. Become still and wait for the answer to emerge. And the question is, how did you react or behave when, when you believed that this person criticized me? Take a few moments and you can pause the video again if you need a little longer. Next question is, in the moment when you're there with this person in your original situation, what were you not capable of in that moment when you believed he or she criticized me? What were you not capable of? And I will give you an example of mine. I was not capable of liking this person. I was not capable of seeing that this person is trying to help me. I was not capable of taking their advice, which was actually good advice. So what were you not capable of? Ask yourself and wait for the answer to emerge. What was I not capable of when I believed? He or she criticized me. And the next question. <clears throat> and here, this question might be a little challenging for some who have not done this process before, because this question is exactly where we start opening our mind, where we ask our mind to suddenly be more open-minded. We are taking it beyond what we normally think and what we normally notice. And so sometimes it might take one or two or three of these meditations or these processes for people to start seeing new answers but for most people they they start seeing some answers with this question quite immediately so whatever comes up for you allow it to come up so the next question is imagine yourself in this very same situation everything is the same the person said the same words did the same things to you you are there doing exactly the same things so everything is unchanged the only one change is you are there in this situation. So push yourself back in your original situation and you're standing there or sitting there observing the whole thing without the thought. That's the only difference. You're there without the thought. He or she criticized me. So become still and allow yourself to notice who would I be in the very same situation, but without the thought that he or she criticized me. Just be still and notice. Who would I be without the thought? Notice what emotions there are. How are you feeling in the body? when you're in the same situation without the thought. Notice how it feels. And perhaps also know, notice how are you behaving? What, are, what is your reaction? What is your behavior if you are in the same situation? but 
without the thought, he or she criticized me. So how is your reaction now when you are without the thought? And notice, what would you now be capable of if you're there in the same situation without the thought that he or she criticized you? What would you now be capable of that you were not capable of when you were all emotional about it? And one more question. Now imagine that person's face. Look at that person's face. Look at him or her. Who do you now see without the thought he or she criticized me? Notice who do you now see without the thought? And even if you're getting some partial answers, some glimpses of an answer, don't worry, we, we don't need a full answer. Anything that comes is okay. For a lot of you, it's the first time with the process. So even if you're getting something like, I can breathe easier, even if that's your answer, that is good enough. Just notice whatever you notice is right for you. Okay, so, so far, we have discovered the same situation with the thought. Notice how, how you reacted with the thought and with all of the emotions. And now we have discovered without the thought, who would I be? How would I have behaved if I didn't have that thought, the judgment that he's trying to criticize me, he or she criticized me. So you also discovered how would I have behaved without that thought and without the emotions which are attached to the thought. And then there's a last stage of this process, and that is we will look at we will look at the part of reality that when we were emotional and very close-minded, because when we are emotional, we get overwhelmed and we only see we have tunnel vision. We, only see usually the bad the bad okay but we will now look at the parts of reality here on the left and on the right that our overwhelmed mind was not able to see before so we will look at something which is called turnarounds and that means we will try to consider the opposites of our belief and see what else did i not see you know yes this was there i'm not saying it wasn't there but can I open my mind even more and see more of reality, be more aware, you know, that's the self-awareness and seeing more of the situation, seeing the whole situation. So let me take you there. The first turnaround, as we call it, that we can consider is I shouldn't criticize me. So I I take the original thought and I turn it towards myself. So notice in your original situation, how you criticize yourself. Notice how it wasn't useful to you that you criticize yourself. And for each of you, it will be slightly different. So notice where specifically in that situation or in general, you criticize yourself. And again, I'll give you an example. My friend was giving me advice about healthier lifestyle, healthier eating, okay? And I realized that, okay, maybe he was giving me that advice once, but I criticize myself about this each and every day. Every time I eat a piece of chocolate, I go Ill into guilt, self-guilting, you know, and... Um, so yes, so I do criticize myself even more than 
my friend criticized me. He only said it once. And I criticized myself about the same thing every day. Okay. And go back again. And notice how in this situation, find one more example of how you criticize yourself. Give yourself a few moments. Where is it that I shouldn't criticize myself in relation to this situation? Where is it that I perhaps criticize myself exactly the same or even more about this than my friend criticized me? And if you need more time, again, you can pause the video. I will move on to the next turnaround. And that is, I shouldn't criticize him or her. So go back to your original situation and notice how you actually criticize this person as well. Did you criticize him for criticizing you? Or maybe he, he gives me advice on healthy eating, but maybe I criticize him about something else. I do exactly the same thing to him in another area of life. Maybe I tell him how he should deal better with his money or how he should study harder. So notice where do you actually criticize this person yourself? You can take a few more moments. You can pause the video if you need to. Normally, we try to find three examples for each of these turnarounds. So normally, I would ask you to find three examples of how you criticize him. In the interest of time, I will move on, but you can definitely do that. The more examples you find, or if you can find at least two or three, it takes you deeper into your own wisdom, your own more enlightened state. Um, so you can find two or three examples for this. I shouldn't criticize him. In the meantime, I will move on to the very last turnaround. And that is, he should criticize me. Okay. And this might be like, no. <laughs> so our first reaction, because it's the 180 degrees opposite of what we think. So think of how is it actually good for you or how might it be good for you, assuming the universe is kind. How might it be good for you that he criticizes you sometimes or that he did criticize you in that moment? How was it good for you or potentially good for you? What was he bringing, he or she? And when I was doing this in preparation for today's video when i was answering these questions myself some of the examples i came up with were he actually cares he takes extra time and thought and effort to think about how he could help me with my lifestyle and how beautiful is that so that was one of my examples of why it's actually good for me that he, I see it as criticized me. I see that he's trying to be a good friend. When I take away the ego, I see that. So think of two or three examples for yourself in your own situation of how is it good, assuming that the universe is kind, that this person criticizes you or what you see as criticism. How is it good that he actually, he or she told you what he or she thought about the situation. So try to find two or three examples for yourself of how it was actually good, or how it can be good sometimes to have that feedback from another person. And so again, if you want, you can pause the video to take a few more moments. And for the rest of you, I invite you to close your eyes for just half a minute. Remember to breathe. And 
my question to you is, what do you know now about this situation? Do you have any new insight? Did you have any new aha moment that helped you see the situation slightly differently, maybe with more wisdom from your own inner wisdom from within? So what do you know right now about this situation? What did you learn from this process for yourself? And whenever you're ready, you can come back into the room, the video with us. And I hope you, it has been just a very, very tiny and faster version. Uh, but I hope it at least helped you gain a little piece of wisdom from within, uh, a little insight, a little aha moment to help you see, to help you open that mind, maybe even this, this much. And so that next time when this person does it, you might have more understanding, more wisdom about it all. And therefore it doesn't trigger you. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. It still might mean that I don't want you to give me all this advice. But next time you might be able to tell him or her much more calm, in a much more calm way that please don't tell me that instead of overreacting. And so it's good for the relationship with the other person. And it's also good for me because I now don't spend two hours pacing around my house. I can use those two hours much more effectively. So thank you all for being willing to um, go through this process. I hope it's been helpful. Sheila, over to you. Thank you, Lucia. That was such a simple and yet such a powerful process. And I know that I've been using this uh, ever since I learned it from you, I've been using it regularly. And one of the questions that I keep asking myself, and I find that very effective, even when, especially when I don't want to go into, I know that's not the right process. I have to go through the entire process. But sometimes when I want a shortcut, I just ask myself that simple question which you asked, which is, who would you be without that thought? Mm -hmm. I think, and that kind of opens up the entire entire consciousness it opens up the entire mind and it allows you to look at the situation completely differently mm -hmm. so thank you very much for sharing this process with our viewers thank you sheila and if i may share um, i do regular practice sessions um, usually once a month i do a free practice session for anybody who wants to come in who wants to try out this process I, of course, do longer courses as well, um, but usually people want to try it out first to see, is it for me, is it not for me? So you're all, all you know, warmly invited to any of the practice sessions. Um, I will speak to Sheila how we can include a link maybe to that. Mm -hmm. And I invite the viewers who've done this practice to actually put it in the comments and let us know how it helped you and what difference you saw after doing this process. I know this Absolutely. is a short uh, session, but yes, join Lucia for her longer sessions and really clear out those emotions. She mm -hmm. and clearing do share emotions. Comments, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> do share in the comments below the video. Do share yeah. if you have, you know, whichever answers you had. Um, if you learned anything about the situation, about yourself, about this person, something new which has helped you improve that relationship with that person, even if it's just in your mind, that is not most important. So do share below this video. Um, that will be lovely. You can inspire yourself and you can inspire others with your answers as well. Thank you very much, Lucia, for sharing your time, sharing your process, sharing your wisdom. Much gratitude. Thank you, Sheila, for having me. It's been fun i always love talking to you so it has been an absolute privilege to be here with you today thank you so that was lucia and what a wonderfully simple process that was right try it out try it out with an open mind and see if it works for you 
and join Lucia as she takes you through the process in a much more deeper way. I have shared her credentials in the comment box below. Thank you for watching Light On and I'll see you again next time. Until then, please share this video and if you haven't done so yet, subscribe. It will help YouTube know that you like content like this. Thank you very much. Thank you.